Christians are doing all kinds of things on the internet these days. Some things are cool, some things are strange. I'd like to tell you about what I found Christians doing on this internet. Welcome to the Christian Geekradar. Hey, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions here with your Christian Geek Radar covering the months of May and June in 2016. Uh, now, first off, I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, let you know what Spirit Blade Productions uh, has been announcing and up to lately. First off, we've got our Thunderclap campaign for the launch of Spirit Blade, A World of Shadows. The uh, the message that's going to go out with that Thunderclap campaign, if you're uh, good enough to, uh, to sign up and, and help us out, will be the long-awaited conclusion to the epic sci-fi trilogy Spirit Blade has arrived. A World of Shadows is on sale now. And that's, what, that's what's going to go out on the uh, social media platforms that uh, you choose, such as uh, Facebook, Twitter, or Tumblr. Uh, just one time, a one-time message that will go out on July 18th. Uh, at 12.06 p.m. Um, a little bit of background on what this is all about. Spirit Blade, A World of Shadows is the long-awaited, especially by me, I've been working on this thing for a while, long-awaited conclusion to the Spirit Blade audio drama trilogy. It will release on July 18th, 2016, and bring our story to an epic conclusion that is both grand in scale, it doesn't get any bigger than the way we're ending this, uh, and grounded in human emotion. Uh, in celebration of Spirit Blade Productions' 10-year anniversary, believe it or not, this year is the 10-year anniversary, uh, Spirit Blade, A World of Shadows, and the previous two stories in the trilogy are being released both in special edition and legacy formats to reach the broadest possible audience. We're also making Spirit Blade Legacy Edition free for a limited time beginning July 18th. You can't even download it right now. All that's available is the special edition of any of these, but all the legacy editions are going to release the same time that Spirit Blade, A World of Shadows uh, releases, July 18th. And on that day, I haven't talked about this really openly before, but on that day, you're going to be able to, for a limited time, starting July 18th, download the Legacy Edition of the original Spirit Blade for free. So uh, we hope you'll be a part of helping us introduce others to this unique Christian sci-fi experience. Um, the Spirit Blade trilogy, uh, it's its an audio, it's a full cast audio drama. If you don't know what audio dramas are, that's like a movie that you listen to while you're doing mindless work in the office or driving or exercising or anything where your body's in motion but your mind is kind of free and maybe a little bit bored. Uh, that's a good time to plug in a podcast like the Spirit Blade Underground podcast or a really immersive cinematic audio drama like the Spirit Blade audio drama trilogy. The way I describe it on the website is the Spirit Blade trilogy is a full cast audio drama series that uses cinematic sound design, and epic film score, and dynamic performances to unleash an action-packed Christian science fiction experience for your ears and imagination. Um, so if you've got any uh, any of those kinds of like mindless things coming up, or if you've got a long drive, or travel, or daily commute to work, or vacation, or something like that coming up, um, go to spiritblade.com where you can check out uh, the, uh, the trilogy itself. And I just posted today, actually, um, the Legacy Edition trailer for, the, for both Spirit Blade and Spirit Blade Dark Ritual, so you can listen to those and the special edition versions of those trailers and for the first time uh, I've put the uh, both the legacy edition trailer and the special edition trailer for Spirit Blade A World of Shadows uh, so if you want to hear the the songs that are included in the special edition version uh, you can get little clips of those right now at spiritblade.com uh, if you click on uh, audio dramas and the Spirit Blade trilogy. Uh, so anyway, yeah, uh, go check that out. Check, the, check that out if that interests you. And, you know, one or two people have asked, you know, what's the difference between the Legacy Edition and the Special Edition uh, of the part of the Spirit Blade trilogy? And so I put on our About page kind of what that's all about. Um, and bear with me, I am going to go on to talking about stuff other than what Spirit Blade Productions is doing. <laughs> I promise. Um, but, uh, the Spirit Blade trilogy was originally conceived as a pseudo-musical, using songs sung by characters to tell parts of the story, but with an electronic industrial style rather than the, the sounds more typical of Broadway musicals. Although a number of listeners expressed their love and appreciation for the songs, it seemed like a good idea to provide alternate versions without the songs included. This was done in an effort to appeal to a wider audience and to allow the trilogy to better stand the test of time and the particular or changing musical tastes of listeners. The 
Legacy editions of the Spirit Blade trilogy have had all the songs removed and the scenes re-edited to account for this. In some cases, new background scoring or even lines of dialogue have been inserted to compensate for this change. The end result is an appropriately labeled, I think, Legacy edition that stands as the prefer preferred version of myself, the author and director, um, although the special editions do remain for those who wish to experience the trilogy as it was originally envisioned. So, anyway, for more information about the Spirit Blade trilogy and uh, all that other jazz, spiritblade.com is where you want to go. All right, moving on, uh, let's see what the Crossover Alliance is up to. They are now accepting submissions for their upcoming short story anthology. Um, they, they say that uh, at this time, the Crossover Alliance does not accept physical submissions. Rather, we would like you to email us your query. This will ensure a, a speedier turnaround time on your submission, and you will receive a reply acknowledging that we received your submission. Uh, they say this is the first year we'll be doing a theme. We're looking for stories that have any and any excuse me that have any and everything to do with the theme of superheroes we're not looking for fan fiction but original stories that blend superhero themes real world content and christian beliefs for more info about what that's all about and the uh, submission guidelines and requirements and all that go to the crossover alliance.com slash anthology the crossover alliance.com slash anthology and while we're there i wanted to point out a couple things that they've been uh, kind of uh, announcing recently uh, they're welcoming d.a williams to the crossover alliance this is a new author um, and i'm not really going to focus on i mean you can go and check out uh, kind of what her book december's child is about it's not releasing yet but uh, uh, but i you know I, the 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 cover grabbed my attention and um, one thing that that's been nice to to see happening at the crossover alliance is is the quality of their covers uh, have been improving this one here as i look at this uh, it still has a a little bit of an independent vibe to it, but it's also a kind of um, a, a minimalistic art style, which is also used in mainstream. And so I feel like the 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 gap between the indie feel, the indie and and you know what used to be, I think, kind of a homemade feel in some of their covers, uh, is getting closer and closer to like a nice solid indie and and even brushing up against mainstream. And I I don't see that any more clearly than in uh, Nikolai the Penitent. Uh, a novel of the Brotherhood of the Cross. And this is a book that's coming out July 26th, and this is probably the best-looking cover I've seen at the Crossover Alliance. And that's really neat for me. Um, full disclosure, David N. Alderman, who uh, owns and runs the Crossover Alliance, is a friend of mine, has been for years. Um, so, uh, you know, there, there may be some bias and some, you know, you know uh, friendly rooting for his success in all this. But, uh, but what's neat for me to see is the, the quality that's going into the covers. One thing that I've felt for a long time is that uh, if your cover is not solid, if it doesn't look professional, that makes me wonder um, what else maybe isn't professional or given the time and attention needed, such as involved in the writing or the editing or, or, or anything else that ultimately makes a, uh, a book, you know, worth reading and of, of high quality. And so, um, you know, this doesn't necessarily speak to other elements of uh, publishing at the Crossover Alliance, but I think it bodes well. And it says, okay, they are not content to just kind of stay where they have been uh, they're they're pushing forward quality certainly you know in the, the area of uh, of covers and uh, and then uh, you know what one can only imagine that uh, that that would carry over into other elements as well so um, I'm very interested to see kind of how uh, this book will be received I'll read the um, uh, the description here uh, they uh, they write we are excited to announce that our next novel release will be Mar will be Mark Carver's Nikolai the penitent Mark's latest book dives into a bit of history surrounding the Black Death flagellation and does not hold back when it comes to exposing religious rituals versus grace. The price of salvation must be paid in blood, it says. The Black Death ravages 14th century Europe. Kingdoms crumble, cities fall, family members abandon one another, God has forsaken his children, and now chaos reigns. A young man who has lost everything is swept up in the turmoil and finds his calling in the Brotherhood of the Cross. Groups of pious men who viciously whip themselves as they parade through the streets of sinful cities, hoping their sacrifice will atone for the iniquities of of the people. As the scars grow on Nikolai's back, he purges himself of lust, fear, and doubt, but the price he pays will threaten his very soul. Um, now, normally I wouldn't highlight a book that doesn't specifically identify itself as fantasy or whatever, but uh, but since the crossover lines does uh, include a lot of speculative fiction, in fact, I would say mostly speculative fiction in uh, the kind of work that they put out, and uh, this cover to me represents a uh, kind of a, uh, a, a new standard for them in terms of their quality, I did want to highlight this and draw a little bit of attention to it. But getting back into true blue, no holds barred fantasy writing, uh, Christian author Brent Weeks. Now I should say Christian author in that he is a Christian and 
uh, his, his Christian faith, his very biblical faith, is certainly all over his work, but he is publishing in the mainstream. If you haven't heard of this author, uh, he's a New York Times uh, bestseller uh, of the, uh, the, what is it, the Night Angel Trilogy, which I, I'm a huge fan, I would, fan of. I would highly recommend it. I did an interview with him on the Spirit Blend Underground podcast uh, a number of years ago, and that's uh, at this point being converted into a, a, a video version that I'll be able to share on this channel before too long. Um, but anyway, uh, fantastic stuff. Very dark and uh, disturbing at times. His uh, The Night Angel trilogy world is a dark and disturbing world with uh, really intense human depravity. Uh, there's F-bombs being dropped all over the place and there's just nasty, nasty things going on. And so it's understandable that he would not find success or even interest in publishing this through uh, Christian channels. But you, I, I think you can't read his books, especially if you have any familiarity with the Bible on, his, on even a very surface level. Uh, you can't read his books and, and not see... Uh, uh, how he's drawing from uh, from specifically Bible stories and truths of Scripture uh, in in the way that he writes. So anyway, I'm always interested in what's going on and what, what kind of news he's announcing. Um, and so he's recently, uh, May, in May on May 11th, I should say, not all that recently, released the uh, release date for Blood Mirror. Uh, he says there's great news and there's good or bad news depending on how you look at it. And there's an apology. The great news first. We're optimists here. The Blood Mirror will be published October 25th of this year. Um, and the 27th uh, in UK, in the UK. Uh, you've already seen the gorgeous cover at the left. Uh, but I goofed and I need to apologize for something that I thought was true when I said it, but isn't. J.R.R. Tolkien once said, the story grew in the telling. Famously, he, he had his too long novel, The Lord of the Rings, broken up into three novels. Robert Jordan believed he had only a single volume left in The Wheel of Time, but when Brandon Sanderson took on the job, he quickly saw that it needed to be three more books. Tad Williams jokes about his four book trilogies. Now it's happened to me. So the bad question mark news, there will be five books in the Lightbringer series, not four. In my judgment, he says, this is the way I can best tell this story. This is what my story needs. But it requires me to go back on something I told you readers. I said the Blood Mirror would be the final book in this series, and it won't be. I'm sorry. I'm already working to make every page worth it to you. Uh, and he goes on with a little bit more. But anyway, BrentWeeks.com is where you can keep track of what's going on. And I highly recommend that you check out his books if you haven't yet. And then lastly, after uh, all this other kind of uh, story type news, uh, one video game bit uh, recently released the Etherlight Chronicles of the Resistance, which is a Christian steampunk MMO. The, uh, the, the, the basic description, one sentence description reads, explore the world of Athasia and join the Resistance in their fight against the tyrannical emperor and his army of mechanical men. The description goes on to read, once a beautiful land, Athasia is now covered by a sickly pervasive fog that corrupts everything it touches. But all is not lost. Rumors are spreading of a fledgling Resistance who have the courage and audacity to try and restore Athasia to its former glory and to reinstate the great engineer back to the throne of Athasia. And that resistance needs you. Engage with the resistance as they begin their immense task of restarting the great engines to drive back the fog and find the great engineer. This adventure will take you throughout the entire land of Athasia, from No Man's Landing, through the snow moors and giant seed forest, right to the ends of the Earth Falls. Discover ancient lost engineer technology, collect unusual items and craft crazy steampunk gadgets to solve puzzles and help the resistance in their struggle against the Emperor Lucky. Lucky's mechanical monstrosities will fight you every step of the way, though. Luckily, the resistance has at its disposal an arsenal of weaponry and gadgets. Take your pick of hammers, dueling canes, rifles, pistols, and mechanical gauntlets. Upgrade and enhance your weapons to take down Lucky's biggest and meanest automatons. Work together to uncover what happened to the great engineer. Fight in each other's battles, share clues and tips to push back the fog in this role-playing adventure that puts you right in the middle of the Resistance's fight for freedom. Uh, now, they, they do uh, mention in a couple different spots that this is kid-safe, it's COPPA certified, I don't really know what that is, um, which means that it's probably not going to appeal to me. I tend to like darker, more serious uh, type of entertainment that is not safe for kids, but, uh, but I certainly don't um, fault them, especially with a project like this when there's so much uh, money and time involved in this. You've got to try and broaden your audience as much as possible in order to you know, make back your investment and be able to do more things and, or, or do upkeep you know, on something like this, especially an MMO. It's going to require... Uh, uh, constant upkeep. So, uh, 
Uh, anyway, the I will say that the, the 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 graphics look really nice. This does not look like I would not look at this and say, oh, this is a a cheap game. Um, it's a uh, it's like you know a, a poorly made you know uh, Christian type game. You know, and you know the 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 kind of uh, uh, what's the word? All the crap that comes along often with with saying, oh, this is Christian entertainment or whatever. No, this looks like it's uh, the quality in terms of the visuals anyway is uh, right up there with a lot of mainstream mainstream uh, MMO. Uh, it is free to play, and you can get more information and check it out now at theetherlight.com. And that's uh, the spelling there is A E T H E R Light. So the A E T H E R Light. Dot com is where you can get more info about that. All right, well, that's about it. Um, please do uh, check out our Thunderclap campaign. I'll make sure to put a, a, a link in the notes here for you. Um, and then uh, we'll have more Christian Geek Radar news for you next month. Uh, in the meantime, if you haven't heard the trailer for Spear Blade or World of Shadows, here it is. The future, a world where the quest for truth has ended and where those who believe in it are running out of time. <laughs> The Shada will bring hell to Earth for thousands of years, and billions will be doomed forever. Once that attack ship gets here, we're glitched. Today marks the deadline for all Seekers to be presented for what is presumed to be a mass execution. Millions more all over the world are actually volunteering to help them capture or kill Seekers. We want to show them love, but we're hated more than ever. Sometimes with good reason. Aren't you tired of Seekers being the only ones that Tolerance can't tolerate? It's people like you they can't tolerate. I want them to seek the truth, but you make Seekers look like monsters. Yes, you hate homos! Burn in hell, sinners! Are those Seekers? They've got bombs. Everybody get down! And the harder we try, the worse it all gets. Shock Division, kill them all! <laughs> I can't understand why the only is allowing this to happen. The only has a plan. He's in control. If he's in control, how is it not all his fault? Why are we not blaming him? Can it really be worth what we'll have to sacrifice? Brothers, stand your ground and die for Christaya! Last, the trilogy is complete. Spirit Blade Productions presents Spirit Blade, a world of shadows. I'm sorry, Asa. I'm sorry I couldn't win this for you. For more information, visit spiritblade.com.